Well, hello. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel, GB Books for Kids. I'm Nana B, and you may call me Nana B. I hope you have heard me read Buggy About Bugs and Bunny Duck and Eggs. Both are great books. Today's book that we'll be reading is this one, and it is called, oh, there's a little bit of a glare there. It's called For Pete's Sake. I think you're really going to love this book. It's quite funny. And if you're afraid of snakes, maybe you better not stay to hear the story. But it's a lot of fun. For Pete's sake. And here we go. Oh, by the way, all my books are on Amazon. For sale, digital or paperback. But let me read this for you. And as you can see, this is not a professional um, setup. I'm not a rat narrator. But I am an author. And again, Nana B is so happy to see you. And everything on YouTube is under Barbara K. Spears, Amazon, Barbara K. Spears. But for you, I'm Nana B. And Nana B for my great grandchildren and my grandchildren. So here we go. And this book is for Pete's sake. Are you afraid of snakes? If snakes can only slither and slide, what makes them so scary that everyone runs and hides? Do you run and hide? I, I'm not a fan of snakes. Garrett is not afraid of snakes. He took Pete, the schoolyard snake, home instead of leaving Pete where he could roam. But as luck would have it, something went wrong. Stop! Is that a snake on your bedroom floor? Oh no! It got away! Let me show you this cute little picture. There you go. See the little girl? She's reading a book and look above her head. What is that? Oh my! Rather scary, isn't it? There's Pete on the other side. Yay! Yay, Pete! Isn't it strange that snakes don't bark or purr, oink, moo, or coo, coo? Snakes don't make noise like rowdy boys. Let's take a look at that. There we got the dog. Ruff, ruff. There we got the kitties. Meow, meow. And the little pig. Oink, oink. And then over here, we got and coo coo and there's rowdy boys playing soccer kind of cool huh that's really neat snakes do not utter the tiniest sound as they squirm upon the ground not one measly yelp does a snake ever make Pete is quiet and shy as it slips by and glides down the schoolyard slides. Ooh, let's take a look at that. I think it's kind of cute. Let's take a look at Pete on the slide. There he is. There's Pete on the slide. Kind of cool, huh? He's sliding down the slide. Do you like slides? I love slides. They are so much fun. Sometimes when it rains, there's always a puddle on the bottom of the slide. You get all muddy. Has that ever happened to you? Let's go on. Let's see what happens. The little fellow, Pete, watches the world through snake eyes while you hike. Do you hike in the woods? There's snakes in the woods, huh? All of a sudden, you look down and scream, Yikes! There he waits, surprise, surprise, and quickly appears before your eyes. Let me show you. There's a little boy. Can you see him? I'll go on this side. There's a little boy. He's got his fishing pole, and he went hiking. And look at the snake. <gasps> surprise, surprise. There he is before your eyes. Oh my, 
I can remember a long time ago, I was out hiking and I looked, this was in Florida, in the Everglades. Well, it's kind of like hiking. It was a little area that you could kind of go through, a little swampy, but you could walk through. And I looked down and you know what I saw? It was really scary. A snake pit. There was not one snake or two. I bet there was 30 snakes all entangled in each other, it appeared. And I really didn't recognize it at first. I just thought it was a pile of, you know, leaves or vines or something. And then I'm, oh, it's snakes. I never did that again. Come Friday, outside during recess, Garrett's friend, David Brown, he found a snake on the ground. David named his snake Pete and put Pete in his lunchbox. At three o'clock, the school bell rang. The day was done. It was time to go home and have weekend fun, but not for David. His teacher, Miss Penny Frack, gave David tons of books and homework to bring back. With all the books, there was no room for Pete in David's overstuffed backpack. David asked Mikey if he would take Pete for the weekend. Pete could stay and play, but Mikey had him bring him back on Monday. Hmm, this is Friday. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Mikey refused. No way! Without asking first, my mother would never let a snake stay and play. Not for a minute, an hour, or a day. Mom's rules, and I have to obey. Nope. No way. Pete can't stay. David Brown thought for a moment, maybe I should give Pete away. I didn't ask my grandmother if Pete could stay and play. Maybe it won't be okay for Pete to stay and play. Let's take a look because here we have you see down there, there's the little boy, David Brown. He's got all these books and stuff from his teacher. You know why? He didn't do his homework. You have to do your homework, but he didn't. And there is Mikey. And what does Mikey say? He says, no way can Pete stay. Why? Because I didn't ask my mom if he could come and play. So he's a smart little boy, and he is Garrett's best friend. Let's go further. Garrett walked by the, and heard the commotion. Garrett came up with a really good notion. Can you guess what it is? Now, Mikey and David can't take Pete home because David said, I don't know if my grandma mother will let me. And Mikey said, I don't know if my mom will let me. I didn't ask first. But Carrot came up with a really good notion. Hey, David, if I must, I can take Pete home on the bus. Pete and I can read, play games, watch television, and I will take him wherever I go, even to church or a dinosaur show. Becca heard what Garrett said. Becca came from London, and she talks funny. During math class, Becca's tummy is always rumly. Garrett, how can you play with a chap who cannot sit on your lap? Read the snake a story? Boring. We all know that snakes won't sit still while you read. David should let Pete be. Snakes need to be free like you and me. Cody chimed in. Hey, Garrett, get real because Becca is smart. A snake 
doesn't watch TV, and I know they don't talk, kick a ball or play baseball, or like to do art. All Pete can do is glide and slide and hide on the playground slides. Mm, interesting. There, there's Garrett, and then there is Becca. She's from London, and they talk funny because they have a bit of an accent. But you know, all over our country, there are lots of accents because we have a lot of people from many countries that live here and love America because it is free. God bless America, right? So, let's see. And there, there he is. And he says, no, you know, let Pete roam. That's what Pete is supposed to do. Moving on. But you know what all Garrett can think of is this. Let's look at this picture. It says, Garrett and Pete, best friends forever. Garrett had this picture in his mind. Look at that. How cute is that? Garrett and Pete, best friends forever. Tina spoke up. This is all the friends in school that Garrett has. Tina spoke up. Garrett, you should take... You should take your snake to Sunday school. Teach Pete the golden rule. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. That is what my papa always says. He is a preacher and a teacher. Even little sis knows this. So here we have Tina. And Tina is with her little sister. Kind of cool, they're leaving school, huh? They're getting ready to hop on the bus. Yeah. Alicia heard what was going on. Garrett, hold your horses. Like Mikey said, did you ask your mother if you bring Pete home? Will it cause a big bother? Does your mom like snakes? Or do they make her shiver and shake? For goodness sake, you need to ask first before you take Pete home. And if you want to go home, we had better get on the bus or Mr. Gus will leave without us. Wow, let's take a look at the school bus and let's look at Alicia because she's got her books, and look, 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 look. There's Alicia with Pete, and then there is the school bus. Pretty cool, there's Mr. Gus, he's a smiling, and the children are standing around him. They should be sitting in their seats. I'm sure Mr. Gus tells them, sit in your seats and be quiet, because if you make a lot of noise on a school bus, it disturbs the driving. So if you want to be safe, keep your keep seated in your seat and keep the noise down. Just like you do for mom and dad when they drive. They don't want to hear a lot of ruckus, so we don't want a lot of ruckus on the bus. On the bus, Garrett told Cody that Pete needs a bed. Garrett said, of course. Pete's bed would not have a pillow or a spread. Instead, I will put soft dirt in a fish tank and mound pine needles for a pillow. Hmm. I can use big leaves for a bedspread. That would be Pete's bed. Sounds kind of neat, huh? Millie laughed. Whoever saw a snake sleeping in a bed? Let's take a look. Here's Garrett and Cody. Here's Garrett and Cody, see? And look at that. There's Pete in the bed. That's how people envisioned it, or Garrett envisioned it. Pretty cool, huh? Do you have an old fish tank, in, in, maybe in your garage or carport or out in the shed? 
Garrett, I think, had one out in the shed or probably in his garage. So, here we got a little girl, Nellie again. She says, Garrett, you are telling a whale of a lie, a whale of a tale. Nellie thought Garrett lied. She looked into his backpack and <gasps> Nellie cried. Oh, Garrett, you are telling a whale of a tale. Nellie thought Garrett lied. Then she looked into his backpack and Nellie cried. Nellie screamed so loud the bus did shake. Then Mr. Gus stomped the brake and parked the bus. He stood up and scolded us. There's Millie with the whale of a tail. And there is the school bus break. Pretty cool. Or the school bus. But you know what? That's where Garrett's backpack was. Because when she looked in it, a snake. The children apologized. We said we were sorry for all the racket. Mr. Gus accepted our apology and straightened his jacket. We were quiet and did not disturb Mr. Gus, <laughs> who occasionally runs over curbs. You want to see that? I bet that's funny. Thump, thump. There's Mr. Gus. He's riding over a curb. Can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cute, huh? Garrett didn't listen to his friends. He bought Pete home to, to stay and play. While Mom was in the kitchen, Garrett hid Pete away. Taking Chica out of the box, <laughs> Garrett put Pete in, the, in and closed the top. Garrett went outside to search for a cricket, looking around the garden spigot. Tomorrow at breakfast, Garrett will tell Mom and Dad all about Pete. He was sure it would be okay for Pete to stay and play. Making believe that Pete was on his head, Garrett looked in the mirror and said, I hope Mom and Dad like Pete as much as I do. If they don't, I might cry, said Garrett with a nervous sigh. Again, Garrett spoke to his reflection. Mom and Dad, this snake is my best friend. So here we go. Let's look at Chica in the box. Remember Chica? There's Chica. Garrett had a box under his bed, and that's where he had to keep, you know, Pete just for a few minutes till he finds something else. Remember, he's got to get some leaves and dirt and pine needles and all that good stuff. But he took Chica out of that box, and he put Pete Pete in and closed the top. That's what Garrett did. And over here, Garrett was looking into the mirror, you know, talking to the mirror, making believe Pete was on his head. And he was kind of figuring out what he was going to tell mom and dad, you know. Mom and dad, look how nice Pete is. And can he come and stay and play? But you know, Garrett should have done that way before he brought Pete home. All his friends were right. You have to ask Mom and Dad to do these things. You just don't... <gasps> Surprise! So here we go. I can tell Pete about Becca. How she wiggles her ears, touches her toes, and balances an empty milk carton on her nose. So Garrett's thinking all the things about his friends that he's going to tell Pete because he thinks Pete is really going to be excited to hear that. You know how Becca wiggles her ears and touches her toes and balances an empty milk carton on her nose. Pete will also like the story how I hit a pop fly and ran to first base. If I tell Pete that I made the team's third out, Pete won't laugh, tease, or shout. 
he will curl his tongue and say, Garrett, you did good, like I knew you would. If only mom and dad would reconsider, snakes aren't always bad because they slither. I could put Pete in a bed right next to mine. Then I could watch him all the time. Pete will not get loose and roam the house. I think this is really cute, you see? There's Becca. You know, in the, the school room when you have lunch, you know, those little cute little cartons of milk? She's got it on her nose. She's figured out how to do it. And then over here, we got Garrett's bed and we have Pete's bed. Garrett's imagining all these things. Do you imagine things too? You know, if you have a good imagination, you could write books. That might be something for you to think about. Hmm, I want to write a book. But when you write a book, first you have to have a thought to start from, like Pete, and then you build on it. And then you got to have characters. You got to have a good character, maybe a not so good character and other characters. So you have to build the little family around your story. Let's go further. So our last sentence that Garrett, Garrett says, Pete will not get loose and roam the house, but if he did, he would chase the mouse who lives in Shirley's garage right next to our house. So, hmm, how do I tell mom and dad I have a snake? For Pete's sake, it's just a harmless yellow snake. In fact, Pete looks fake. Let's take a look at the little mouse at Shirley's house and let's see how fake Pete looks. Let's take a look. Ah, look at the little mouse at, in Shirley's garage. I love it. He opens his door and says, hello. <laughs> and there's Pete. He doesn't look real, does he? He doesn't look scary. Let's go on. Saturday morning, the rooster crowed. Yes, he did. It's morning. cock a doodle doo We have roosters next to us. I love to hear them cock a doodle doo all the time. It's beautiful. Okay, what do we do now? And the rooster is saying, get up, sleepyhead. Saturday morning, Garrett jumped out of bed. It wasn't time to get up, but Garrett didn't care. Without being told, he brushed his teeth and combed his hair. After getting dressed, Garrett pulled the box out from under the bed. Remember, that was the box that Chica was in, and Garrett put Pete in, got him a little cricket from the spigot, and a little dinner there, and now Garrett pulls the box out from under the bed. Oh, no, this can't be. Guess what? What do you think happened? was gone. Ah, oh, poor Garrett. Let's look at the rooster. See the rooster? Pretty cool. cock a doodle doo So Garrett got up early. He didn't care. He, he brushed his teeth and combed his hair, pulled the box from out under the bed. Oh no, Pete's gone. Let's turn the page. There's more. How can this be? This is very strange to me. Again, Garrett looked into the box and gave a little shout. Ah, oh, for Pete's sake, how in the world did Pete, my snake, get out? Uh-oh, Mom was passing by. Garrett, did you say Pete's sake or snake? Garrett answered his mom, trying not to cause an alarm. <gasps> mom, hmm, what would you do if you saw a snake? Alicia said it might make you shiver and shake. Mom 
wasn't happy. Garrett, what have I told you about playing with snakes? Didn't I tell you to leave them alone? The woods is their home. They need room to roam. Hearing what his mother said, Garrett's face, face turned beet red. Garrett was sad. Mom, Pete, my snake, got out of the box that I hid under my bed. I was going to tell you and Dad today. I was hoping you would let Pete stay. It's all my fault, and I confess I have made an awful mess. There we go. There's Garrett and Mom, and there's Garrett's face turning red. You know, Garrett knew at that moment that he did wrong. You know, sometimes when we do something wrong, we really need to say we're sorry. You know, I'm sorry, Mom, I did that. I didn't mean to do that. And, you know, we need to learn to apologize and to confess when we do something wrong. In grown-up terms, that's called accountability and responsibility. Responsibility that we understand we did something wrong. Accountability. We confess that we did something wrong and ask for forgiveness. We do this with God too. When we do, we break one of the Ten Commandments. We say bad words. We're mean. You know, things like that. We should apologize and say we're sorry. Garrett says, it's all my fault. I confess I have made an awful mess. What is the mess? Pete is missing. Pete can't be found. He's nowhere, nowhere. Mom pointed and whispered, Garrett, please pick up your toys on the floor and look under your chair. Pete might be hiding there. Hopefully Pete didn't leave your room. I will get a bucket and a broom. Mom, left in haste. No time to waste. Why was Mom in a rush? She knows how quick snakes can move, and she didn't want that snake all over her house. So she was getting her bucket and broom. I guess she was going to sweep the snake into the bucket. <laughs> Dad popped into Garrett's room. Huh, Garrett, why is your mother getting a bucket and a broom? Garrett, you are you not sick with the ick, are you? So Dad thought Garrett was sick, you know, because sometimes you put a bucket by a bed if your tummy's a little ill. That's what Dad thought. <clears throat> Mom quickly returned, looking at Dad. Garrett doesn't have the ick. He hid a snake under his bed. The box was hidden by his spread. Hmm. Dad was confused and amused. Did you say a snake? I had a snake when I was your age. I hid him in a hamster cage. Your grandpa and grandma told me to set it free because that's the way nature is supposed to be. Dad smiled at Garrett. So, Garrett, what kind of snake did you find? Mom was a little bit more, hmm, not happy. Dad didn't mind too much because he had a snake when he was a little boy too, but he still said, Snakes should be where they can roam and free. I like that because that's the way nature is supposed to be. So there's mom and then there's dad, Garrett. These are Garrett's parents. Garrett says, Dad, I think it's a garden snake kind. His father replies, Garrett, do you know the difference between the venomous and the non-venomous kind? There's a big difference. You need to be careful what you find. That is why Mom and I told you not to play with snakes. Some are deadly and some are kind. It all depends on which kind you find. Don't take a chance like that. 
If you get bit, it's worse than the ick, and you will get extremely sick. It's best to leave all snakes alone, like Mom and Grandpa said, the woods are their home. Garrett spoke. Dad, Pete was David's snake, and it's a non-venomous kind. Our teacher showed us pictures because we had a snake at school. Pete likes to glide on the playground slides. Pete the snake is cool. Dad dumped his finger on his cheek and then cleared his throat to speak. Hmm, let's see. If I were a snake, where would I be? Getting on his knees, Dad searched for Pete. Dad looked under the rug, but all he found was a plastic beetle bug. Dad stood up and looked in the closet while picking up toys. Dad made a lot of noise. Dad got on his knees again and pulled out dirty socks from under the bed. Mom frowned. <laughs> Not a word was said. Chica came in twirling her tail as she pussyfooted on all four feet until she saw Pete. <laughs> Let's take a look. There's Mom, and then there's Pete, you know, um, Pete, excuse me, there is Chica. She's strolling in, you know, all four feet until she sees Pete. What happens next? I'll tell you. Her fur stood two inches high. Her eyes bulged out of her head with one loud meow. Out of the door, Chica fled. Pete was on the bookshelf. When Pete saw the cat, he scat under Garrett's nightstand. Let's take a look at that picture. Ah, there we go. There's Chica. She's very upset. If you see a cat like that, mm, stay away. They're very mad or scared. But also, take a look. Can you find Pete? He's hiding. Did you find him? So, when, when Chica saw Pete, she ran out the door. And when Pete saw Chica, he hid under Garrett's nightstand. Mom was rattled. Oh my, I might cry. Dad said, honey, don't cry. Please get me the vacuum, but don't plug it in or turn it on. Garrett, you should have listened to me and Mom. Snakes live happily when they live in nature, out in the yard, woods, or forest. Snakes should not live among us. So, why does Dad want a vacuum, but not to turn it on? That's strange. Mom wanted a bucket and a broom. How do you catch a snake? Especially a snake that is hiding under Garrett's nightstand. Let's go a little further. Mom got the vacuum, but she did not plug it in or turn it on. Then she was curious. Why do we need the vacuum? Can't you reach under the nightstand and grab the snake? If Pete goes crazy, just give Pete a little shake. Dad moved the bed out of the way. <laughs> Isn't this an exciting day? No, I, Dad said, no, I won't grab the snake but I will get it with the vacuum wand. Don't plug the vacuum in or turn it on. Dad's got a plan. I hope it works, do you? We gotta see, huh? Cause it's for Pete's sake. So let's take a look here. There is the vacuum and there is the wand. And can you find Pete under Garrett's nightstand? Oh, take a little peek. I see him. Yeah, I bet you see him too. 
I bet Pete is scared also, don't you think? In a flash, Pete made a dash right into the wand and up the hose. Garrett could tell his dad was surprised by the startled look in his dad's brown eyes. You gotta see this picture. It's really cool. Look at that. Dad, dad took the head off of the vacuum and just kind of left the wand and the hose there. And there's Pete. He's looking. He thought it was a little snake hole. Maybe that's what he thought. And he just went right for it. He was scared too. Dad said, now that we have Pete, what should we do? I haven't a clue. Picking up the vacuum, Dad placed his hand over the wand. Mom advised, take the vacuum out of the house and leave it on the lawn. No doubt, Pete will slide out. So between Mom and Dad, they figured it out, huh? They did. Sometimes it takes a couple people to figure things out. When you have a problem, that's what you should do. Go to Mom and Dad. They'll help you. Dad smiled. Well, that sounds like a plan to me. The yard is where Pete needs to be. Mom noticed that Garrett was very sad while walking down the back door stairs. Garrett, you have Boomer the dog and Chica the cat. But if you would like Dad to set up your fish tank again, we can buy some fish. Garrett was surprised. Uh, how about goldfish, Garrett said. Can we go to the pet store today? Dad set the vacuum on the ground. Let's go right now. I bet when we get back from town, Pete will not be found. So, I think they're going to the store to buy some goldfish. Garrett's dad was right. Pete was happy. It's good to be home. Now I have space to roam. Let me show you. He got away and he's so happy. He could go back with his friends, see the other little snakes. I don't know if he'll go back to the schoolyard again. I think he learned his lesson. I think so. In the book of Genesis, God took the ground and formed every animal and every bird in the sky. God brought all the living animals and birds to Adam. God told Adam to give names to all the tame animals, the wild animals, and every bird in the sky, even the snakes. There's a little girl. See her? Yeah, she's reading the Holy Bible. Yeah. The Bible is, you should read it. Mom and Dad should read it to you. Little Bible stories. Very important. And they're really good stories. So also in my book, you will find, you gotta find the words. Like when you find the word Pete, can you find the word, word snake? There's all kinds of words in there in that word find. I think it's really good. There's dad and mom and vacuum and chica and hide. All kinds of words that you can find. And then over here, here's where you can draw and color. I think it's really neat that you have these in the books. And then you can date them. Oh, we got more coloring in the book too. Look at that. Oh, isn't that great? You can have fun. Sometimes it's good to color in your books and, and save it for another time. And when you get older, you can look back and say, Wow, look what I did. I did a good job. So, this story is for Pete's sake. For Pete's sake, it was best for him to be in the woods or the yard, you know, where he could roam and be free. That's where Pete needs to be. So, I hope you enjoyed that story. I love telling you that story. Am I afraid of snakes? Mm, they're a 
okay. <laughs> I like to look at them in the pet store, but you know, my heart breaks for them because they really need their freedom. They do. I'm sure you wouldn't want to be kept in a little cage. No. They need to be among the other animals that, that are wild and free. So, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I'll see you again. All my love from Nana B, and thank you for being here.